Hey, this is Eric Wasatonic of Electronic Tonic 156. And a few days ago, I was playing around with my neon flickering candle flame light bulb, uh, putting it on top of my Tesla coil. And in the midst of my experiments, I could you know, clearly see what it looks like. But I wondered if I hooked it up to one of these, what would it sound like? Let's find out. And there it is, the flickering neon candle flame light bulb. Um, I got the 120 volt battery pack right behind it. Um, I've got a, a uh, 100 ohm resistor in series with it to measure the voltage, uh, or use, use the scope, uh, measure the voltage across that so I can get a current reading. And also directly in series with uh, Keithley 2000 multimeter um, which has very fast response time uh, so I could see, see uh, you know it's hovering around four or five six milliamps or so uh, that was my first measurement um, a few days ago so I decided I would hook it up to the scope and get a better picture of what's going on and you can see there's a lot of fluctuation there's lots of periods of, of just steady on time or steady off time and also some high frequency stuff going on there so and uh, it's really difficult to get a good picture of exactly what the waveform looks like with this with a uh, non-storage oscilloscope so I'm going to hook it up to a digital scope and uh, get a better picture of this waveform and here it is hooked up to a Tektronix digital scope a DPO 3012 um, has a 5 mega point capacity but I have it set for 100,000 data points uh, going across so let me pause it here and then zoom in and take a closer look at what's going on and I've got it set for with 200 millivolt per division plus the 100 ohm resistor down there that makes 2 milliamps per division so it's going anywhere from 2 milliamps to 4 mill milli or I'm sorry to, from 4 to just a little bit below 6 milliamp or so uh, there are some little dips up here that goes down to about 3 milliamps or so, but I'm looking right here and I just want to get a look at the frequencies involved. We're looking at about 14 kilohertz. Let me move it over a little bit. See, there's a steady state on of about 5.8 milliamps until we get to 13 kilohertz. Let's see what's going on right here. There we got, looks like 7 kilohertz or so. Nine. Eleven kilohertz. Another seven. And there's also a few points here where it kind of dips down a little bit. Right there into the three milliamp range don't know what's going on there but then we're back up to about 5.6 5.7 or so milliamp and over here in this big swath got 17 kilohertz 18 20 kilohertz 11.14 and then back up to 17 or 18 kilohertz so it looks like if I were to convert this directly into an audio signal I wouldn't be able to hear a good portion of it because so much of this waveform is in the 15 to 20 kilohertz range which is which is at or near the threshold of human hearing so to, if I was to play this back in real time um, I'd have to do some funky modulation of the you know I could use the amplitude or the frequency of this waveform to module to frequency modulate another waveform um, that would of a lower frequency that I could actually hear all the all the peaks and valleys of the uh, the waveform here um, or I could just 
record it and then play it back at a slower speed. So I'm going to try you know, a whole, a whole bunch of different possibilities and see what kind of weird sounds we can get out of this neon lamp. And for the audio amplifier I just used the LM386. It's a very simple 8-pin device and I use the, uh, the very basic 20 dB gain circuit here. Um, everything's the same except for on the input instead of having a pot I instead have a uh, AC coupling capacitor on the input and then there's the 100 ohm resistor and the neon tube that's that's the schematic symbol for a neon neon bulb by the way just uh, a glass envelope and two parallel plates in there and the little dot indicates that there is a gas that's the the general indication for any kind of vacuum tube symbol uh, the little dot indicates that there's a gas inside the tube there's a circuit on the breadboard let me hook up the battery and we can listen to it so it seems like the higher frequency portions are when the plasma gas actually hits the top of the, the flame shape of the, uh, the parallel plates in there. And, um, and the sound of it, to me, it sounds like it's a bird chirping, um, but like, like somebody's making a recording of a bird chirping and there's heavy rain that's falling on the microphone. Um, you can leave a comment and tell me what you think it sounds like. For this next bit, um, I want to record the sound and then play it back at slower speeds. But um, rather than going through the amplifier and the speaker and then the intern and then the microphone of the camera, um, there there's going to be some distortion because of the speaker. So I want to get as good of a high fidelity signal as possible. So I'll be plugging straight into the microphone input of the camera and I've made one major change and that is replace the 100 ohm resistor with a 20 ohm resistor uh, so that the output voltage which I'm measuring taking on the other side of the capacitor so it's AC coupled you know the output voltage will be uh, much lower so it's it won't cause any clipping um, internal to the camera so you know the the camera won't be clipping the signal when it gets in if the signal is too great That's what the neon candle flame sounds like. It's at normal speed, it's absolutely terrible, and at slower speed, it's both bizarre and terrible. My future plan is to make some kind of a circuit that I can use the current signal from this to modulate another audio wave, and rather than a direct conversion, I can do something else and get some even weirder sounds out of it potentially. You can leave comments down below and let me know what you think this thing sounds like, both at normal speed and at um, slow speeds. 
and also I would like to I would like to see other people do this same experiment with uh, flickering LED flickering candle flame LEDs that are available. Um, Evil Mad Scientist Laboratories has demonstrated that you can take a flickering LED and hook it up to a, a high power LED and control the brightness of the high power LED with the flickering candle flame LED. But um, I would like to see if, you know, what would it sound like rather, not what, rather than what it looks like. So hopefully somebody can try that out and post a video. And uh, thanks for watching. See you later.